This step is going to be all about completing this window by adding the extra detail pieces. And we'll start with the frame. We could create this out of different cubes or we could go through extrusion, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to introduce you to a different primitive shape and also show you a way that you can edit the primitive's initial values to give different results. So we're going to start with a polygon pipe, which wouldn't appear to be the ideal shape for a window frame, but see what I do to it, you're going to be amazed. So we'll go to create. Pipe isn't on this quick shape shelf. So if we go to create polygon primitives, and there's pipe there, and that will create it at the origin. So I'm just going to bring it out of the ground, and I'll just frame it up a little bit. And then the first thing I'll do, because I'm remembering at the moment, is just call this frame. Lovely. And then under inputs polypipe 1, here's where all the magic happens. To get this to look more like a window frame, it's the subdivisions axis that we need to make a change to. So I'm going to click in there, and instead of 20, I'm going to change it to 4. And then it goes a little bit square. Yeah, nice. Then I'll just need to bring the thickness down a little bit. Let's try 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3. Let's have it chunky. Awesome. And now what I also need to do is, at the moment, it's in a diamond sort of configuration, and I want it to be more in a square configuration, so I need to rotate it. In order to do that, I'm going to turn my rotate tool on. I'm going to bring it around 90 degrees on this axis. So I'll hold J on my keyboard just so that I get rotation snapping on. There's 90 degrees there. And then what I'll do is I need to rotate 45 degrees. Again, I'll hold J like that. And that then you can see is going to be something we can work with to create as our window shape. At this stage though, I just want to make a change. This is now how I want the default orientation of this shape to be, but you can see if I put something like the scale tool on, it still thinks the orientation is like a diamond. And we can do something to sort of reset the way that Maya sees the shape. And it's called freezing transformation. So what it will do is zero everything out, and Maya will kind of see it as a new shape with this default configuration. So if we go to modify, and freeze transformations. You'll see that's reset my scale tool. Everything here is zeroed out, uh, but these changes here have remained. And now what I can do with this bad boy is stick it in the window hole. So let's throw it over here somewhere. Oh, where am I? Yeah, about there. And I'm just mostly going to place this by eye. So I will, of course, need to scale it up. That's pretty nice. Make sure it fills the hole. And then, of course, we need to just get the thickness under control. We do want it to protrude from the window. So the back side of the wall doesn't matter too much. We won't see that. But we will see the inside. That's the important part. Yeah, so that's pretty nice. I think now that I've scaled it up, though, I do want it to be a little thinner. So I'm going to do 0 0.2 on the thickness. Yeah, so that's pretty nice for the main kind of window frame. The next thing I want to do is to get something that will work as dividers for like four panes of, of glass. And I'm going to do that with a cube. So here's a new cube. I don't actually know what these are called um, in window terms. If there are any glazers watching the tutorial, feel free to let me know. I think I'm just going to call it divider. And again, I just need to get this pretty much in place. Our placement doesn't have to be perfect because we can always change it later. Uh, but getting it somewhere close does help. And I just want to bring the size down like that. Yeah, that'll do to get me started, I think. And then the trick to this, there is a trick is we need to select the faces. So right click, hold, go into face mode. And I want the faces around the outside, just like that. I do not want the front and back, just those ones. And what we're going to do is use extrude to bring faces out in each direction to create a four-way divided shape. So this time I'm going to hit Control and E for extrude. This is going to bring this little chap up here 
and we need this keep faces together option. So if I do local translate, you can see that it brings it out in all directions at once and just kind of fills the hole, which is not what I'm going for. If, however, I change keep faces together to off, so I'm just sliding it there and do the same thing. Look at that. It gives us a four way divider, just as I had hoped. So now we can go back into object mode on that shape. Make sure it's central enough. Perfect. And I'll probably just bring it forward a little bit. Like so. So that then is now getting there. That's starting to look like a window. The next thing I want to create is a bit of a kind of feature piece at the bottom to make it look like a, a chunkier window sill, I think they're called. So that's just going to be a cube. And we'll call it window sill. Is that how you spell it? Again, in the comments, if that's not how you spell windowsill, uh, or if that's not what it's called, let me know. I can learn from this experience too. So that's what I'm calling it for now. Let's kind of get it in place. Okay, and when I'm happy with the position of it, I'm going to size it up. And I want this to overlap the window frame that I've already got so that we can't see it. Or, so we can't see the original. We want this to look bigger and chunkier than that. So then we'll just scale it out so it goes all the way through. That looks pretty nice. And then just to make it look a little more interesting, I'm going to select this face here. And I'm going to just scale it up a little bit. So that it's not too even. There we go. Nice. Oh, it's nice. One last step to complete the window then. We're going to put a cube in that will represent the glass. So one more cube. We'll call it window glass. Good name. I'm pretty sure I've got the name of that right. And again, I'm just going to pop it in place. This one obviously needs to be quite thin and then we need to kind of get the depth so that it's in the middle of that that looks good try and get it central it doesn't really matter if it's perfectly central because we're just going to hide the the joins like that back into object mode okay what have i done there ah oh, i think i scaled it too much Let's just bring the thickness back in. Yeah, looks nice. Okay, at this stage, things are starting to look a little too gray and difficult to see. You've got a couple of options to make it easier to look at. So in your panel menu up here, you can turn on this, which is wireframe on shaded, which is one way of doing it. Or one way that I kind of like to do is this here, which is screen space ambient occlusion. It's like contact shadows. So when you turn it on, it just adds shadows to corners and makes things stand out a little bit more. If you've got a weaker computer though, then uh, I wouldn't use that because it does take a little bit more processing to turn it on. Uh, but I think I'm just going to leave that on for now so I can see where all my joins are. That's the window complete then, and that will do it for this step. The main purpose of this step was to introduce you to another way of extrusion, really. That's what the um, dividers in the window were all about, and about keeping faces together on or off. The next step, we're done with the window. We're going back to the table. I'm going to use extrusion again to create a detail piece for the table leg. So I will see you in the next step for that. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.